Hello, I'm Ian Leyland. I'm the art director for Star Citizen, uh, and today we're going to talk about underground filters. Now, this was a presentation that we gave Chris internally a little while back, and what we're going to cover is um, how we're going to take one of the uh, locations we have in the game right now, but actually really design it uh, from the ground up to be the location archetype that we really wanted. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about the original underground facilities. Now, the problem was we made these originally for the CISMCOM presentation demo, and the time we have had wasn't enough to kind of take the location where we wanted it to be. Now, it kind of fits the current purpose. It's fairly small in scale. It gives a, a multi-room layout opportunity for FPS combat, but we always knew we wanted it to be able to scale you know, small, medium, large to accommodate maybe 60 minutes of gameplay uh, time per location. So how do we go about designing a location archetype from the ground up? So what we do is we split the location into the core areas we want to visually develop. Now for underground facilities, the first thing we're looking at here is what we're calling zone one. So this is the presence on the landscape. So what we're looking at here is a, an example key art shot of what a medium sized underground facility could look like. So dominant features that we're seeing here is a, is a, a kind of a key spire. This is instantly where your player, uh, you should be able to navigate towards. This could be like a, a corporate wing or an, exec, an executive landing pad on the top. And then moving down is very important to be able to get the landing pads or the landing hangars quite close to the facility because we wanted that experience as the player lands. They're not far off from the location. They're actually quite close and you should be able to see um, a little FPS area uh, where the player lands. Also, what we're seeing here is some visual justification at what might actually be going on. So you're seeing, you know, um, processing and tanks and supplies actually on the landscape there. Now, what I was saying before about it being a, um, a kind of a, a much braver visual presence on a landscape. So we designed the silhouette primarily. So you'd be able to recognize these um, as a location to aim for. Also, what we're seeing here is we thought it'd be cool to actually have surface entrances as well. So we're actually thinking about primary, secondary, and tertiary ways for the player to get into um, these locations, depending on the mission scenario. So like I said before, you've got like executive pads at the top, got the main hangars in the middle and surface entrances down there below. Now moving on to the inside, so after the players landed uh, through the hangars, they'll be brought up into the main corporate reception. Now these are going to be quite interesting because we'll be able to rebrand these depending on the manufacturer or the location, that's where we'll uh, get a lot of the variety. But this is the, the corporate presence before the player would go down into the bowels of the facility. And what we're seeing here is you know, just an example of what a bearing reception uh, could feel like. Now, moving into zone two, with it being an underground facility, the physical act of going underground, that's cool, right? So we wanted zone two to be about the logistics of the player going up and down, and how we can make that cool visually, but also interesting from a player experience. So this is the, the transit, the elevator network. So we played around with a few different ideas into this, and one of the things that we thought could be quite interesting is the elevator itself could be a mini play space. So what we're looking at here is control room idea quite early, uh, what sort of scale vehicles there could be. Now, ultimately we didn't go with this idea. It was, um, didn't really fit the art style that we wanted, um, but it had some pretty interesting ideas. So what we landed on here is uh, something that we felt quite comfortable with internally. Now it's worth noting, we're designing these as a, an archetype first in um, a utilitarian art style. Uh, in the future, we'll uh, expand out and do other art style variants. So what we're seeing here is the control room overlooking the main uh, warehouse floor. And then this elevator is should be big and clear enough for the player to understand like that's where logistics will go up and down. And for the elevator itself, we wanted it to be its own play space. So on the top level, that's where containers will be shipped up and down. But maybe underneath it, there could be little uh, nooks and crannies if we wanted to stealth into the location 
we'd be able to give opportunities for the player there. And down below, this is what the player would kind of see. So now they're really starting to get into the bowels of, of the facility. So echoing of that control room down um, below, but also this is where we'll present the player with an opportunity to choose the area they want to go. Maybe cargoes to the left, maybe processing to the right, or maybe technicals up above. Part of that process of how we design is we look at things about from the player's point of view. So what we're seeing here is pretty good indication about how the player would exfiltrate from the location. So a lot of the lines are leading towards the elevator because we want navigation to be as intuitive as possible. Moving on to zone three, so this is the bowels of the facility. So these are gonna be spaces that we've never really explored before. A lot of the locations in the game tend to be quite residential, but here we're going for something completely industrial. As a player, you wanna feel like uh, an ant almost to the location. The primary purpose is not for you to be walking around. So we dedicated spaces towards logistics and we put kind of personnel walkways almost as a secondary element. So in this image, you're kind of seeing where, you know, big trucks could kind of go. But we've also got like little nooks and crannies for the player to kind of explore uh, and go into. Now, as it being a location dedicated towards the moving of uh, logistics, we wanted to explore and have fun with vehicles, right? So here we've seen the mule kind of coming and going on one of these walkways. You know, maybe there's elevators. So on the right, what we're seeing is an, um, a ladder. So with all of these play spaces, as we were do, having fun and visually exploring, we always kept in mind of different ways for the player to traverse through the scene. Also, as part of that, we wanted to think about verticality. So not just a linear direction of traversal, but also ways in which we could go vertically. So maybe there's uh, the concept of a cargo elevator within the, the corridor. So kind of similar to how you'd see uh, on a character be a little control room looking at the uh, flight deck. Here you could kind of see something very similar. Maybe this ties into gameplay puzzles about how you could bring cargo in and out. You know, maybe you, as a player, you're trying to steal some cargo out. There's tons of potential for how we could do puzzles in that regard. So looking at this image, we, we took loads of inspiration from uh, modern day aircraft carriers about how you see um, pads on the flight deck go to the underbelly. We thought this would already give tons of opportunity for uh, not only uh, cool visuals, but also ways in which you can uh, reveal uh, extra traversal opportunity. So as that cargo deck goes down, you'd see other ways to kind of traverse through into the facility. Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, kind of an example corridor. Now corridors in our game are quite uh, important to us, but they don't necessarily have to be boring. Now what we're seeing here is an establishment of a radial motif. Now with this being subterranean, uh, we wanted to always um, imply that there's a weight kind of pushing down. So this radial motif is the best load bearing. So uh, as a design language instantly was feeling quite right. So in this traversal corridor, what we're seeing is a few different things. Clearly there's a clear route for logistics, that's cool. Uh, but also on top of that, you've got these side routes, which is where personnel would go, split hierarchy. So it would be pretty cool for um, FPS combat, you know, for opportunities there. And then leading in, underneath you kind of see in a tertiary route. Now, um, part of this could be this maybe is stealth route, or maybe this is um, the upper area is blocked off, so the player has to go down below. So even within something as a concept of a, a corridor, we want to design many different avenues for the player to traverse. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the underbelly of that concept we just showed. So up above, dedicated towards logistics, maybe containers going through, shipping containers going through. But underneath here, maybe this is just more towards the, the processing of it, maybe hydraulic cylinders for these elevators coming and going. Hierarchically, it's a different mood. So up above, it's cleaner, it's noisier, but down below, darker, more steamy. And again, that presents other opportunities for gameplay. Now we can't have these corridors going on forever. Performance wise, we'd never be able to draw it and it wouldn't be 
uh, the most entertaining for the player. So we came up with the idea of introducing these bulkheads. So these bulkheads are almost checkpoints. So it enables us to break that draw distance, but also enables us to break the rhythm of traversal. So from going from a corridor into a, uh, an ops room or something like that, that's a way in which to, to kind of checkpoint the progress to the location. So inside these bulkheads, we could maybe array like ops rooms. Maybe these are scanning checkpoints um, to kind of monitor um, the movement of cargo to and from. You know, also inside here, you know, there could be tea rooms or break rooms or offices. So again, we're trying to break the rhythm of traversal. So the player's going from a large space to a small space, but also from one theme to another theme. And what that will hopefully do is create a really good uh, rhythm of play space where the player's not getting um, bored of uh, traversing through the space. So what we're seeing here is uh, a side view to kind of explain how that process. So on the left, we've come in from the corridor. So on the top, we're seeing the primary route through and we're seeing the bottom route coming in as well. So this is how, again, we're gonna try and keep verticality as a traversal motif in mind. Now going from a large corridor set to what we're considering here, uh, medium or small. So these are the tertiary networks that will link into the primary uh, traversal route. So these again will be continuing the radial motif that we've been seeing, and these will take the player and connect into the main spaces. Now from traversal networks to theme rooms, now, as the player is traversing through, we wanted to chat to that experience with key theme rooms. Now, what we're seeing here is an example of uh, an industrial space. Maybe it's processing. We didn't want to go too specific. Uh, just so the, uh, in the early development process, we wanted to explore motifs that could work. So here we're seeing an example uh, processing room, but there's a few key things that's kind of cool. So right from the bottom level, there's a network of levels which uh, will be dedicated towards processing, you know, pipes, machinery, all of that sort of good stuff. And then as we get higher up, we're seeing that very dominant kind of technical uh, control wing suspended over the play space. As, as an idea, this creates a, a, a plethora of uh, interesting opportunities as a play space uh, to fight the way through or solve puzzles. One of the things early on we wanted is cause and effect. We wanted the player to be interacting, solving puzzles, but seeing that reflect into the space. Another theme room uh, uh, idea we came up with was processing. So bringing in raw materials, processing them through, ready for manufacturing. So we had a bit of fun with uh, ways in which we could kind of create these quite interesting set pieces. So it's not all just industry uh, in the underbelly of these underground facilities. There's also gonna be technical areas, uh, areas dedicated towards the uh, control of the location. So what we're seeing here is uh, maybe it's the, the main map room. So this is where they control the networking of everything. Uh, and also on here, you've got the overseeing executive suite. So it's not just technicians here, but also uh, executive wings. Uh, and also as a bit of fun, if the player does get access to these executive wings, then we're seeing another type of art style in here as well. So we've seen industrial, we've seen technical, and now we'll be seeing, you know, more like the, um, the corporate uh, foyer we saw up above. So meeting rooms, office spaces, that sort of thing. And what we're seeing here is maybe there's the data processing of the location. So as a quick idea, we thought these data racks are actually submerged uh, for cooling in uh, a base of water. We thought also it'd be cool if there's a cause and effect. So if the player solves a puzzle, to go from it being below water to above water. So again, ways in which we can kind of spark ideas or conversations with design about uh, interesting opportunities. And then lastly, zone four. Now, it wouldn't be, it'd be a missed opportunity if we didn't go into some sort of uh, organic locations as part of the underground facility. So this could be excavation zones or areas where it'd been abandoned. This could lead into cave networks. This was something we had quite a bit of fun with. So how do we actually take 
the player from being in this fairly well-established industrial location to a cave, there needs to be some form of uh, transition period. So we came up with ideas about how we'd see excavation equipment or, you know, with the roads kind of peter out. And as part of the roads, you know, maybe we can uh, do some pretty cool uh, layouts for the player to drive through, something that's a, a little bit more invested than just a, a straight line. Now, as part of that transition period between heavy industrial to exposed cave, the equipment needed um, to create further UGF spaces, you know, maybe there's a large boring machine still there. Again, maybe that comes into some form of gameplay opportunity for the player to traverse over, interact. That's kind of cool. Also, as part of that, another opportunity to introduce a new element uh, to the space could be as we're transitioned towards more natural spaces, we can not only introduce different types of geology, but maybe we're introducing some form of liquid. So depending on the location, maybe it's on a certain planet, there could be like underground rivers, underground lakes, maybe it's lava, maybe it's acidic. And also if we're describing uh, these locations as maybe some are more abandoned, we could start to showcase how nature slowly started to take over. This also would introduce some pretty cool opportunities. So also another process we do during concept development is I like to start taking some of these ideas we're developing and get them in the engine as soon as possible. And what this affords us is we can sit down with Todd and we can really evaluate how well an idea is working in terms of space, size, composition, gameplay opportunities right from the early uh, visual development process. And what we're looking at here is very loose concept meshes brought into the engine, quickly lit, just for that uh, exploration process. That's an overview of what we're pushing for for the new uh, underground facilities. I'm quite excited about it and hopefully you are soon. And we look forward to showing you more in the future.